Hi students, it's Mr. Sagers back with another video for Earth and Space Science. The topic of today's lesson is humans and planet Earth. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain how the availability of natural resources, Earth's variable climate, and the occurrence of natural hazards affects human activity. Let's get to it! Take a moment to consider a few of your daily needs and the way that you go about meeting them. For thirst, simply turn on a tap and fill a glass of water. For hunger, take a trip to the nearest grocery store and stock up on your favorite snacks. For transportation, drive on down to the gas station and fill up the tank with the fuel of your choice. In this modern world of convenience stores, drive throughs and Amazon Prime, we often fail to consider the providence or source of the goods and resources we consume on a daily basis. Water doesn't just come out of our pipes, eggs aren't grown in a grocery store, and gas isn't brewed in a gas pump. In actual fact, nearly every physical good or resource we consume comes from the earth in one way or another. These are called natural resources and represent any material or substance that occurs naturally and is not man-made. Natural resources are often refined, meaning they go through a chemical or physical improvement or purification process to better meet human needs. For example, we purify copper ore in a smelter before it can be used in electronics, wiring, computers, and cell phones. No matter the end product, however, nearly everything we use has its start somewhere out in nature. Be it a ribeye steak, an iPhone, or your favorite t-shirt, the goods we consume on a regular basis all once began as natural resources. An important point to consider regarding Earth's natural resources is that they are not evenly distributed around the planet. Take the world's crude oil reserves as an example. Crude oil is a natural resource extracted from underground and then refined to create fuels for our cars, trucks, and airplanes. This infographic shows an estimation of crude oil reserves by country. Notice how the size of the country isn't represented by its area, but rather by the amount of oil available for extraction. In this diagram, we see that Venezuela holds the world's largest claim to underground oil reserves. Meanwhile, countries such as the United States and Russia, while larger in geographic size, do not have as much oil as does Venezuela. The same can be said for other natural resources as well. The amount of gold, sunlight, fresh water, and even access to the world's oceans varies from country to country around the planet. Thus, in addition to creating a complex network of international trade between countries, the scarcity of natural resources in certain parts of the world has meant that humans have had to adapt the way they live in order to meet their needs. For instance, the distribution of natural resources has a major impact on where humans choose to settle and build their communities. Prior to the 1840s, the overwhelming majority of the U.S. population lived east of the Mississippi River. Very few had ventured west, and even fewer had made it across the continent to the Pacific coast. On January 24, 1848, a discovery in Sutter's Creek, California changed all that. Gold, a precious natural resource, had been found glinting out of the creek bed. By the following year, tens of thousands of 49ers were migrating west to seek their fortune in the California mountains. The discovery and abundance of gold in the West directly affected the course of human activity and history in the United States. The availability of this natural resource gave rise to the establishment of human settlements and the growth of the human population both in California as well as other Western settlements in Nevada, Arizona, and Oregon. Throughout the course of human history, therefore, natural resource availability has had a massive impact on where, when, and how humans have chosen to direct their activities. Be it fertile soils, fresh water, wild game for hunting, rivers for transportation, or any other number of natural resources, humans have based their activities and settlements around access to these needed resources. Other environmental factors have influenced human activity as well. Climate, for example, is a big determinant of where humans choose to settle. Take the world's hottest deserts. Second only to Antarctica, Africa's Sahara Desert is the largest desert in the world. Although small settlements do exist throughout the Sahara Desert, no major cities have ever been established in this sandy and arid land. In the case of the Sahara Desert, access to fresh water is the major limiting factor that makes it nearly impossible to establish a thriving metropolis among the sand dunes. Can you imagine a city as large as New York in the middle of the Sahara Desert? There simply wouldn't be enough fresh water to sustain human life, let alone all the other activities, such as agriculture, that require the vast amount of fresh water needed for millions of residents. A final factor worth discussing that affects human activity around the globe is the occurrence of natural hazards. 
A natural hazard is any naturally occurring phenomenon that could have a negative impact on humans, other animals, or the environment. Examples of natural hazards include droughts, wildfires, flooding, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, severe weather, hurricanes, tornadoes, and tsunamis. The human species is often forced to adapt their activities to overcome natural hazards when they occur. For example, reservoirs in the arid American West are built to store water in case of droughts. Skyscrapers in Mexico City are constructed in a way that makes them able to withstand the violent shaking of earthquakes. Seawalls, such as those in Japan, are constructed to protect coastlines against 50-foot tsunami waves. Storm shelters are common in the Midwestern United States in the event of tornadoes. In severe instances of natural hazards, humans may need to resettle entirely. For instance, as sea levels rise, human settlements along coastlines may be forced to move inland in order to avoid flooding. But despite these challenges, humans are resilient. Throughout our history, the human species has proved itself time and again capable of adapting to the challenges posed by the availability, or lack thereof, of natural resources. We have responded to changes in climate, and even settled in climates that were once deemed inhospitable. And we have overcome the debilitating effects of countless natural hazards. As we face the future, one of our biggest challenges will be to manage the planet's available resources in a sustainable way. Living sustainably refers to our ability to meet today's needs while not compromising or ruining the needs of future generations. After all, there is only a finite amount of resources available for our use, and humans must learn to maximize the planet's resources as efficiently as possible. So to recap, nearly everything we eat, use, or consume had its start as one of Earth's natural resources. Natural resources are unevenly distributed around the planet and are more abundant in some areas than others. Humans have had to adapt their activities to suit their needs based upon the availability of natural resources, the Earth's variable climate, and the occurrence of natural hazards. And living sustainably means meeting today's needs while also preserving the Earth's natural resources for the use of future generations. Well, that wraps up our video on humans and planet Earth. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, at Astra.